know, Hamaru Yoshi found the turtles covered with goo. Bingo! You get the feeling all this is starting to lead somewhere? Hey Shellheads, it's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. Mutagen has been a part of nearly every origin story of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But where does it come from? And what does the goo do? Like every iteration of the turtles, it varies. Over time, the turtles evolved and so too has the ooze. But before we can get to the goo, we have to talk about this week's sponsor, our Patreon supporters. For as little as $2 a month, you can see these videos early and get a sneak peek of what's coming next. Right now, we are doing weekly reviews on every issue of The Last Ronin and The Lost Years. Interested? We're offering a 30-day trial for free. Check out the link in the description below to help support us. We now return to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In 1983, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were two artists looking to make the next great comic. Both were fans of Cerberus, an anthropomorphic aardvark, and Conan the Barbarian parody. An aardvark was one of the least likely animals to brandish a sword, so Kevin considered what weird animals could be ninjas. Given their speed, the hilarious answer was a turtle. I never understood how, how turtles could, uh, could be so, uh, so fast. Kevin sketched one with nunchucks and showed the drawing to Peter, who did his own. The two made another piece with four ninja turtles, with Laird adding Teenage Mutant to the title. Why Teenage Mutants? Marvel's New Mutants was an X-Men spin-off about a group of younger mutants and the title sold gangbusters. With a goofy premise and a long name, Eastman and Laird went to work crafting how their teens became mutants. Dude, we have to come up with a story that tells how these characters became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But before we can get to the ooze, we have to travel back to 1964. Since their first issue, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have had several nods to Daredevil. Matt Murdock's teacher was Stick, theirs is Splinter. While Daredevil fights the hand, the turtles face off against the foot. But their debut issue insinuates their origins are literally connected both have a truck traveling with hazardous material. Each has a blind man with a cane stepping in front of the vehicle who is saved by a young man. An old blind man was crossing the street when he was almost run down by a large truck. In Daredevil number one, an onlooker describes that a cylinder fell from the truck, it struck his face, but we never see the canister. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, we see the container strike the boy, bounce towards an open manhole, and break a fishbowl holding four baby turtles. The cylinder is specifically labeled TCRI, and its contents are only described as goo and glowing ooze. It wasn't slime, it was ooze. They don't initially explain what it is, but like Daredevil, it may have been radioactive material. With a hit on their hands, Eastman and Laird released two more issues. The third has a wounded splinter taken to the headquarters of the Techno-Cosmic Research Institute. Techno-Cosmic Research Institute? So? Yeah. Huh? Say the first letter in each word. What? T-C-R-I? Inside, he discovers the facility is run by brain-looking aliens operating human exoskeletons. My friends, let there be no more secrets between us. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, an official RPG by Palladium Books, expanded on the strange ooze. It confirms the goo was waste material and that it was actually a mutagenic microbial agent, a byproduct by one of the aliens' experiments at producing organic circuitry. 
this is the first time it's described as mutagenic. The Mirage comics wouldn't revisit the ooze until March 1986 in issue number 7. In it, the brain-like aliens called Utrams reveal that 20 years before, their ship had crashed and they were moving the last salvages of it into the city by truck. They also describe it as a mutagenic agent, but offer no explanation as to how it changed Splinter and the Turtles. Mutagen wouldn't become the Goo's default name until the 1987 animated series. On December 14th, the first episode debuted and detailed a different origin than the Mirage comics. Splinter was no longer a pet of Hamato Yoshi, but Yoshi himself. Rather than the canister accidentally shattering a fishbowl, a young boy trips. After adopting the turtles as pets, Yoshi later finds them covered in a glowing pink ooze. It was a powerful mutagen. It caused whoever touched it to take on the form of whatever animal they had most recently been in contact with. This popular concept of mutagen giving hybrid characteristics is never mentioned in the Mirage comics or Palladium books. As the show would go on, mutagen would make more than just animal hybrids. But how did the mutagen end up in the sewer? The story of my young friends and I is really the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi. Like the Mirage comics, Yoshi is a member of the Foot Clan, but there isn't a love triangle with Oroku Saki's brother. Instead, Saki seeks to control the Foot and frames Yoshi. Hamato Yoshi leaves in exile for New York, living in the sewers. Unsatisfied with Yoshi simply being banished, Saki follows him to finish his rival once and for all. Meanwhile, in Dimension X, Krang, a reptilian warlord, hires Dracus to build a mobile fortress, the Technodrome. Krang commands an army of rock soldiers led by General Trag and Granitor. Lord Krang! It's implied that Krang may have mutated boulders to create his rock soldier army. We see this process reversed when Krang throws anti-mutagen on them and they return to their stone form. What we have here is an anti-mutagen which will return any previously mutated species back to its roots. Just as the rock soldiers have reverted to the rocks from which they came. With an army and technodrome at his disposal, Krang became a threat too large to ignore. Perhaps his species transported him to Earth, like they did with Impervium. Whether by accident or intention, Krang's body is reduced to the near immobile form we see. Yeah, Krang doesn't have a body. Not now, but he used to have one. Oh yeah, that's right. It was taken away from him when he got booted out of Dimension X. Uh-huh, and the clones have that data in their DNA. So they're growing bodies the way some lizards can grow new tails. A bodiless Krang and his Technodrome meet Oroku Saki, now donning armor and calling himself the Shredder. You wouldn't be shredding anything if it worked for me. The diabolic duo make a deal. In exchange for building him a new body, the blurbering brain will give Saki advanced technology to destroy his enemies. This includes the Technodrome, robots, Dude's nuts, they're robots, and of course, mutagen. Ever the ninja, Saki tries to surreptitiously assassinate Yoshi with the glowing goo. He pours the slime down the sewer, but rather than kill him, he makes the mean green teens. I followed him to this country where I gained my advanced technology, including my rare experimental mutagen. It was I who caused you to mutate into your humanoid form. You owe everything to me. When Shredder realizes his rival is still alive, he concocts a new scheme to match his mutation. Krang suggests... You were the one who tried to destroy Yoshi with that mutagen, but instead he gained the powers of the rats. 
But suppose Yoshi had been near a more powerful animal. Supplied with more mutagen, Shredder mutates two volunteers, Bebop and Rocksteady, with a warthog and a black rhinoceros. The five-episode first season concludes with Saki tempting the turtles with a retro mutagen gun to reverse Splinter's condition. It is a retro mutagen ray generator, a device which undoes mutations. Naturally, Shredder attempts to use it on the turtles before it's destroyed. In 1988, the first line of action figures was released. The card back shows Shredder pouring green ooze down the sewer. A year later, Playmates would offer kids a chance to make their own mutants. Retro Mutagen Ooze contained green goo and a glow-in-the-dark pre-mutated turtle. They would also release Retro Mutagen Foot Ooze, a purple variant. Foot Ooze sounds disgusting. In the 1987 show, Purple Mutagen was likely created in Dimension X, since we only see it in the first few episodes. It wasn't that color before. But what color did Eastman and Laird intend their goo to be? While the original comics were in black and white, First Comics published a trade paperback with the first three issues colored in 1986. We see the ooze glowing as Eastman and Laird intended, a garish green. Unlike the animated series, the Mirage comics only had one other mutant exposed to the Utram ooze, Leatherhead. In Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 6, a pet alligator is flushed down the toilet. He is discovered in the sewers by Utrams. Like the turtles, he was accidentally exposed to a mutagen they had developed. During the course of this observation, I was accidentally exposed to a mutagen the Utrams had created. But the mutagen's colors would change depending on its properties. There was, of course, the classic green, orange, yellow, blue, turquoise, and even rainbow. Well, that stuff's supposed to be green, not tutti fruity. In season two, we learn that mutagen can be manufactured with chemicals found on Earth. Unfortunately, what I think you was the last of it, but I can tell you how to make more. No, pay attention. Throughout the seasons, several fictitious chemicals were mixed to create mutagen, including the following. Dexon 9 and Flautistin. All right, now mix the two chemicals carefully. Splendid. Now, I need the pinch of niobinoline. In the episode Mutagen Monster, two trains carrying chemicals collide. Those are the chemicals that are mixed to create mutagen. It creates a morphing mutant bowl, but as Donnie explains... It could only mean one thing, that the monster's mutant form is still unstable. Which allows them to reverse the mutation. Later in the series, we see a similar unstable mutagen, which also causes temporary mutations. It looks like it's gotten unstable. Hey, that would explain why their mutations aren't permanent. They were unstable because they were missing the final ingredient. We must have that bind X3 in order to stabilize the mutagen, or else it can't cause any permanent mutation. What happens when you fall in a vat of chemicals without bind X3? You, oh God, this is a kid show? Wait, that's what he becomes? What's the matter with me? <laughs> what did that stuff do to me? In the episode Splinter No More, Donatello reveals he kept what remained of the ooze that transformed them. This is all that's left of the mutagen that changed us from ordinary turtles into the party animals we are now. With it, he is able to reverse Splinter's mutation, albeit only temporarily. Having been on nine years, it was inevitable that the show would mutate most of the supporting characters, at least once. Naturally, they return to normal by plot convenience or a retro mutagen ray. Dudes, we've got to get all these people back to normal. Well, I know how to do it. 
but you're not gonna like it. How? Shredder's retro mutagen ray. In Muckman Messes Up, Shredder is looking for Compound X7. Oh, what's Compound X7? <sighs> it's a top secret experimental mutagen that Krang thinks will counteract the mutation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and turn them back into tiny little turtles. While they never find Compound X7, they do find a new type of mutagen, which they pour on two unsuspecting garbage men. Is that okay? It fuses them with nearby trash, making... Muckman. And let's not forget, Joe Eyeball! Donatello offers to cure both of them, but they tell him to take his time. Anti-mutagen was also accidentally developed when rock soldiers dropped welding chemicals into lava. Because sure, why not? When Shredder finally uses it, the anti-mutagen turns them into... balloons? Not exactly what I was striving for, but effective nonetheless. The effects of mutagen also vary when diluted or supercharged. In Leatherhead, Terror of the Swamp, an alligator is exposed to the same ooze the punk frogs mutated from. Who are the punk frogs? Oh yeah, the frogs! They were mondo cool amigos. The leftover mutagen mixes with the swamp water. When the turtles swim in it, it revitalizes them. But when humans fall into it, they rapidly de-age. The mutagen content mixed with the water's natural minerals have turned it into a modern-day fountain of youth. Krang also experiments with supercharging mutagen. With this new supercharged mutagen, we can create an entire army of super mutants. Rocksteady uses the blue goo on Bebop's pet turtle, Slash. Wait, wasn't Bebop the last animal that Slash touched? Why isn't he like a man turtle pig? <laughs> it is half man, half turtle, and half pig. Speaking of, Hamato Yoshi wiped the mutagen off the turtles with his hands. Why doesn't he turn into a turtle? What the heck is going on here? In 1988, another comic series was launched by Archie Comics, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures. Originally, the comics were adaptations of the animated series, but quickly diverged into their own stories by issue 5. Like the show, mutagen was repeatedly used to create mutants whose DNA merged with the last animal they touched. The series focused heavily on environmental issues, and mutagen became an allegory for illegally dumping toxic waste and oil spills. Professor, perhaps you could tell us why TGRI has finally decided to clean up the waste it's been bearing here for years. The 1990 feature film was an amalgam of comics and cartoon. It took several Mirage stories and mixed in elements of the animated series, including the colored bandanas, April being a reporter, and their love of pizza. Pizza! Naturally, it had mutagen but it behaved more like the Mirage comics. Only Splinter and the Turtles are exposed to it until the sequel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Much like the cartoon, Shredder concocts a scheme to create his own mutants in hopes of defeating the radical reptiles. The Foot steals the last of the mutagen and kidnaps Jordan Perry, a TGRI scientist. Using an alligator snapping turtle and a gray wolf, they create Toka and Razor. Wolf, snapping turtle, incredible! Professor Perry is able to synthesize an anti-mutagen, reverting them into their animal form. Desperate, Shredder takes the last vial of ooze and becomes Super Shredder. It's interesting to note that in the films, we only see five species of animals mutate, but there isn't any mention of taking on properties of other animals. I awoke to find the four had doubled in size. The ooze had affected their growth. It changed me also, making me larger and more intelligent. Instead, like the Mirage comics, 
Mutagen seems to transform most creatures into stronger, smarter, and bipedal versions of their species. Already bipedal, Super Shredder certainly gets stronger, but maybe not smarter. Shredder, you gotta listen to reason! Supposedly in an earlier draft, Dr. Jordan Perry's abdomen was going to open up and reveal he had been an Utram the entire time. Producers were afraid children would confuse the normally peaceful Utrams with Krang. But without the reveal, the subtitle doesn't make any sense. In fact, there is no secret of the ooze. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You mean to tell us that the formation of the ooze was all just a big mistake? Well, let me see. Uh, Donatello, isn't it? An unknown mixture of discarded chemicals was accidentally exposed to a series of radiated waves, and the resulting ooze, as you put it, was found to have remarkable but dangerous mutagenic properties. I know, Donnie. We could have had aliens and vanilla ice. I just always thought there'd be more to it. To the ooze. To, you know, us. Removing the cosmic element from the film is why the company's name is changed to the Techno Global Research Institute, or TGRI. But there may have been one hint of Utram involvement that made it into the final film. I knew that there was something else going on with those guys. In the end, April reports TGRI mysteriously disappeared. And in a bizarre final note, to the mysterious disappearance of TGRI, this message was delivered to the station earlier today. This might be a reference to issue number seven, where the Utrams teleport back to their home planet and then set their building to self-destruct. After a lackluster third film, the animated series ended in 1996. It would be seven years until another animated series debuted in 2003. This series would stick much closer to the Mirage comics, featuring TCRI, Utrams, and only a handful of characters being mutated by the Ooze. Unlike the original comics, their Ooze was created while working on a transmat. The Ooze that originally mutated us all was a byproduct of their experiments with this transmat device. So, the chemical makeup of the ooze is caused by the interdimensional shift of non-essential subatomic particles. To celebrate the 25th anniversary, Turtles Forever had the 2003 series meet their 1987 and Mirage counterparts. So fun. The 87 Turtles brought with them pink mutagen after stopping their shredder. That's just ooze! We fight old bucket breath over that stuff all the time! Since the mutagen comes from the 87 universe, it creates hybrid animals from the last creature they made contact with. After two purple dragon members are mutated, Shirelle Shredder weaponizes the ooze, making the mutant army Krang and Shredder often dreamed of. Our human troops have also been upgraded. By analyzing the mutagen that infected Han, we have successfully engineered our own mutant army. When IDW began producing Ninja Turtle comics in 2011, their mutagen wasn't accidental, but intentional. In this version, ooze is the main ingredient of mutagen, and they are two separate substances. Ooze originated from the Utram homeworld, Utramanon, and surrounding region. It is the elemental basis for all Utram life and technologies, and had been almost completely depleted. General Krang, son of the Utram Emperor, survives their planet's extermination by transporting to Earth. He supplies Stockton with ooze in hopes of making a super soldier mutagen to continue his conquest. Looking to make their own super soldiers, the Foot steal the turtle test subjects and mutagen, but drop them. Oops. That's the origin of four of the Ninja Turtles, but not the fifth, Jenica. A foot defector, Jenica is stabbed by Karai. Leo gives her an emergency blood transfusion, but the mutagen in his blood, as well as his turtle DNA, mutate her. 
the idea of mutagen still remaining in the turtle's blood was originally explored in the three-part Mirage story, The River. A leech sucks Raphael's blood, growing in size while reversing Raph's mutation. Speaking of Raphael and blood sucking, Inside those turtles is the most precious compound on Earth. Mutagen. And we will drain every last ounce of their blood to get it. The 2014 film borrowed several ideas from the IDW series, including the turtles being test subjects, April naming them, and magic mutagen blood. April, possibly as a joke, says the mutagen may be extraterrestrial in origin. Supposed to be from a different planet in outer space. So they're aliens? No, that's stupid. They're reptiles. Although, later Eric Sachs explains he helped create it. We developed a mutagen capable of stimulating self-repair on a cellular level. Also, like IDW, mutagen and ooze are two separate substances. In the 2016 sequel, Crane gives Shredder purple ooze, which is never referred to as mutagen. It wasn't mutagen. It was ooze, 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 ooze. Baxter Stockman injects it into Rocksteady and Bebop, which turns them into their familiar mutant selves. Baxter explains, Inside every human, there's a dormant gene which ties us to our animal ancestors. It's as if that purple ooze has returned them to their rightful place in the animal kingdom. Sure. Donnie realizes it might also be used to turn mutant turtles human. Ultimately, they destroy the last of the ooze. The 2012 animated series would have a different Krang be responsible for mutagen on Earth. As explained in War for Dimension X, For millions of Nextons, the Utram all had individual personalities. Then one Nexton, an Utram scientist named Krang, discovered the mutagen of the Krathatragon worm. Krang Prime was born, becoming deranged in the process. He used his horrible psychic powers to overcome millions of Utram, turning them into slave copies of himself. These Kratha... Wait, what? <laughs> the Krathatragon... Uh, the, the space worms is easier to pronounce. The space worms are milked for their green goo and the effects vary. Gross. In the first episode, it seems to make hybrids of organic material like the 1987 show. The turtles become more human-like while Hamato Yoshi becomes rat-like. We later see it also makes hybrids of organic and inorganic material like Ice Cream Kitty and Muckman! They don't care about me. I'm just a joke. When a mutant is re-exposed to mutagen, they become super mutants like Razor and Mega Shredder. So why do the results vary so much? Krang is giving that which is known as a warning. The mutagen is unstable in this dimension. The results desired may not be the results that result from the actions taken by the one known as Shredder. The sporadic nature might also be due to the fact that the Krang hadn't perfected the mutagen. When they do, Donatello realizes the ultimate goal is to terraform Earth. That's what Leatherhead meant when he said they perfected the mutagen. They're going to use it to transform everything on Earth, even the people. They're going to turn Earth into another Dimension X. Long after they're teenagers, the last Ronin takes place in a future where only one turtle has survived. Michelangelo is on a suicide mission to avenge his brothers and kill the Lasaroku. In the apocalyptic future, Casey Jones and April O'Neil have a daughter, Casey Marie. Casey has extra abilities, which were a result of her parents having a lifelong exposure to the turtles. Trace amounts of the mutagen DNA were passed on, which gave her superpowers. After the last Ronin falls, the epilogue shows April and Casey Marie looking over a new quartet of turtles, this time being intentionally exposed to TCRI's ooze. The sequel prequel series, The Last Ronin, The Lost Years, 
shows us those new turtles as toddlers in training. Hey kids, what do we do to bad guys? We tickle them! Tickle, tickle, tickle! How April and Casey Marie got the Utram ooze hasn't been shown yet. The upcoming logo for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, has also already hinted at mutagen. Like the effects of the ooze, it will likely keep mutating as time goes on. If you like this video and think we deserve it, hey, you like it! please subscribe. Go, 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 go. As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. I'm Heidi with Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. Foot ooze sounds disgusting. <laughs> Things I don't want. Foot ooze.